I have a good sex life, not mm-hmm. afraid to say that. Um, I suppose I'm not the sort of person who says it's anything less than a good sex life. In this day and age, people are having sex younger and younger. There's more and more sex on TV, in music. Me and the guy making out on the rugby pitch. But I am basically kinky besties at this point. Some edge play includes blood, knives, needles, electro, fire, and consensual non-consent, all that sort of thing. Just one of those things like, I... I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of my sexuality. I'm not ashamed of the sex that I have. I enjoy it very much. I enjoy sex. Well, I mean, the way that I see sex and consent is quite simple. Don't get some until you get some. That's true. My life is a porn. I just don't film it. Welcome, Welcome to the A-Slot Podcast, with your host, Steel Core. Now, strap yourselves in and prepare for some sexy talk, some educational chat, and terrible jokes. Joke. And remember, let's get A-Slot. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the A Slot Podcast, where we talk about everything sexuality. And today we talk about this crazy little thing called the fuck zone. Oh boy, this is a big one. Um, I actually had a big fanboy moment um, when the first guest uh, for the first half of this podcast messaged me on on the old Twitter and wanted to get together and talk about. Um, talk about well. She had a few topics that we could have talked about, but this is the one that stood out to me the most. Uh, unfortunately, the interview didn't go quite as long as uh, what I'd hoped. It we both had a couple of time constraints, um, but it was still a really cool talk uh, for the half an hour that we did have. Uh, but yeah, big fanboy moment because this person has been uh, published in. Places like the Washington Post, uh, New York Times, Playboy, uh, New York Magazine, Vice, Teen Vogue, lots of places like that. So I just went uh, sort of absolutely crazy when I had the chance to uh, to talk to her. Um, her name is Susanna Susanna Vice, uh, and it was yeah really really cool to be able to talk to her. Like I said, not as long and not as in depth as I would have hoped. But uh, still really, really cool. The second part of today's episode was talking with a an old, old, old friend that I went to high school with that I haven't seen in about 15 years um, about the fuck zone and how she has been both the fuck zone-er and the fuck zone-e, which was uh, a really, really cool chat as well. So we go through the ins and outs of, of how that felt and... Yeah, strap up, stitch in. Go and follow me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Aslot Podcast. Go to the website www.aslotpodcast.com, or send me an email at the Aslot Podcast at gmail dot com. Please enjoy, and don't forget to stay a slutty. Uh, in this fuck zone, swear you got me. Uh, 
in this fuck zone, swear you got me. And I'm very proud to welcome to the show, Miss Susanna Weiss. Welcome to the Aslap Podcast. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I am fantastic. I'm so, so, um, so, so happy to have you on because uh, you contacted me a while ago and I sort of fanboyed a little bit and I'm really, <laughs> really excited to talk to you. Thank you. Um, so for, for those that don't know you, pe- a lot of people already do and a lot of people should know you, but tell us a wee bit about yourself before we get into into this hard topic. I'm a freelance writer focused on feminism, sex, and relationships. My work has appeared in the New York Times, the Washington Post, New York Magazine, and elsewhere. Um, I also am working on a number of side projects, a few books, I write poems, and I'm training to be a shaman of sorts. Um, I think that's a good summary. Yeah, really cool. And the, it's this writing that's, which is why I was so excited um, to talk to you because there's some huge publications in there, and it's and it's really really cool to um, talk to somebody who is so happy to talk about the subjects that you talk about, which is which is really really cool, especially from a feminist point of view because there's a lot of male led literature around it, but it's it's great to see more females talking about it with with ease and with freedom. Thank you. <laughs> so um, what, what we're going to talk about today is something that I find really interesting, and it's coming to the fore a lot um, more recently as well. Uh, I've even seen memes and stuff on Facebook and whatnot about it. But it, we're going to be talking about uh, basically the myth of the friend zone, or the problem with the idea of the friend zone, and the fact that girls get stuck in... Well, basically the fuck zone, right? Where guys just want to fuck them and not have anything else. Yes. And like I said, this is a massive thing right now. Um, so I guess, originally, you have written an article on this. Um, two articles on this, correct? At least two. I yeah. Can- one so, for Playboy, one for Everyday Feminism. I think I've done one for Bustle as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I, I definitely know those first, so I don't think I've um, I, I've heard, I've read the other one. But um, so tell us a wee bit about why you decided to bring this up as a topic. I've had several experiences around this with me thinking that I had made a friend, um, sometimes in vulnerable situations where I like was in a place where I didn't know anyone um, or was lonely. And then I learned that really what they wanted was, was for me to sleep with them. And yeah. I felt that... Um, this fosters a sense of loneliness that isn't often talked about when you think you have made a friend, but actually they just want to use you. So I just wanted to point out that while people, um, often men may complain about women who only want to be their friend, there's another side to that of feeling like you are only being seen as a sex object. And I think it's really important that we are getting this other side of this because so often, like for years and years now, we've t- talked about um, the friend zone, and I've I've been one of those guys in the past where I've been annoyed that I'm just the friend, just a friend, and I never really pictured it from the from the perspective of the other person. In that, it it must be a really, really, really terrible feeling, and I can only really guess for this. To realize that your worth to this to this other human being is literally just as or almost like a sex toy sort of th- thing as a sex object and nothing other than for sex how how does that make a woman feel for if oh it's, in your in your estimation i guess it makes you feel like an object it makes you it makes you feel rejected ironically if even if you're the one rejecting them romantically, it makes you feel like your personality and inner qualities aren't appreciated. So it's like you're being rejected as a friend. Um, it makes you scared <clears throat> to trust men um, mm-hmm. who want to be your friends because you don't know if their motives are pure. 
Yeah. Um, and it can even, some of the women I interviewed for that Playboy article said it even excluded them from social groups because they were just so tired of getting hit on and of the guy not getting the message that they just avoided the whole group entirely. Right, and, and that, that can sort of happen when it's, um, you know, you've got a group of friends and this person, this, this guy is part of that group of friends. That's the sort of situation you're talking about here, right? Mm hmm Yeah. And it, it's really, really sad that one person can, can affect a whole friend group around that. But if you feel uncomfortable in that situation, then you don't want to go and do it. And then you don't. And next thing you know, the rest of the people in that group aren't catching up with you as much, even one-to-one, -one, right? Right. And that's, man, that, that's seriously got to suck. Well, I, 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 I'm trying to become a better feminist, and I'm not there yet. So this is all great learning experience for me personally as well, which is why I'm so, so happy to talk uh, talk about it um, and one, one of the biggest things that you find or that I've heard I guess within this whole friend zone thing is the the whole hashtag nice guy <laughs> sort of situation right where the guy sits there and goes but I, I am a nice guy and you're just like well <laughs> are you though <laughs> um, yeah the nice guys like, the guys who say they're nice guys are rarely actually nice. Mm -hmm. Because if you think that you deserve a badge of honor because you are being decent to women, then that reflects a sense of entitlement and a sense that, like, being decent to, nim to women isn't the norm. Um, and often they feel like just by virtue of supposedly being nice, they are owed sex or dates or something, which is not nice. Yeah, and and you you've actually in your everyday feminism article um, that you state that nice guy behavior is based on one's sense of superiority stemming from that nice guy status, and usually when when the nice guy is rejected, and it's they're, they're showing this, uh, the word that you use is indignation when they get rejected. Um, <laughs> and that, and that, sorry, go ahead. How dare you? Yeah. How dare you reject another human being that you may or may not be interested in? <laughs> like, it's, it's actually quite, quite gross. And I, I'm reading through this article as, as we're talking because um, it has been a while since I've read it, I won't lie. I read it when I was still in the States, which was a fair wee while ago now. Um, so I'm, I'm just topping myself back up with it. And the and you say here that he guilted you into a second date. Tell me about that. Well, maybe that's not entirely fair. I could have said no, but he made me feel bad. He was like, but, like, we had all these conversations. Did they not mean anything to you? I'm such a nice guy. Like, girls, they go after the assholes, and then they reject nice guys like me. It's not fair. Like, I'm the one who's actually going to treat you right. They just want to fuck you. Or he said something really gross. He was like, they just want to pop your cherry or something. Yeah, um, I, I, I did, <laughs> as bad as it sounds, I did chuckle at that and just how how gross it was it made me chuckle if that makes sense <laughs> just like how can someone get away with saying something like that yeah it's like it was such an objectifying like he was the one objectifying me by yeah. claiming that other guys just want my pussy um because he is essentially saying then that that's all i'm valuable for so it's very interesting how they think all the other men are objectifying you, but actually they're the ones doing that. Yeah, absolutely, and and they don't and they don't realize realize it at all. And th this this one was your first ever run in with the with the hashtag nice guy as well, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. And and you've had a fair few since then, and you've come to realize that these behaviors are actually red flags as opposed to actually he's a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. So as as I continue on through this article, there's basically 
like uh, a bunch of claims that that nice guys will say, right? Mm-hmm. And the first one is you owe nice guys a chance. Now, <laughs> I've actually heard this being used. Like, I'm a nice guy, just give me a chance, right? It's quite a common, quite a common trope, for lack of a better term. And, yeah. and you just sort of sit there, and you're just like, actually, you don't owe anyone anything, ever. <laughs> like, there's just, you can give a chance to whoever you want, you don't owe anything. And that's, that. I think that's a really, really important point to go on, because there's a lot of, uh, there's, a, there's a lack of self, self-worth everywhere in the world, right? And that's where this sort of you owe not, you owe someone something comes into play for a, quite a bit in in my experience anyway, and people will accept that because they're like, oh uh, yeah, we'll take how we get it. Have you come across that at all, really? Well, I actually feel like I've heard it from other women because I feel like there's this idea that um, men are more afforded the right to be subjective in their attraction, I think, to have their tastes and preferences, and they're their own. But for women, it's almost like you have to, like they're, um, like it's some video game, and they're, as long as they do all the tasks that they're supposed to complete, then they win you. And so then if they do and you don't like them, then it's like, what's your problem? Um, I feel that the role of physical attraction is underplayed for women. We're always told, like, oh, he'll grow on you if he has a great personality, which is not always the case. Um, I feel like we're shamed for caring about looks and not, like, going with someone with a great personality if they're not expected. There's still got to be that that je ne sais quoi, that something special between you, right? That chemistry, that raw animalistic nature as well I guess you can't just expect okay he's nice I'm attracted to him and it's going to yeah. work from there right right and uh, something that you've written in this article again is is quite um, poignant to what you just said like even if someone actually is nice you may not want to date them for a number of reasons like you have nothing in common you're not attracted you don't really want to date anyone and and you're going to say that all these reasons are valid so regardless of you know, how nice, regardless if they're actually nice or not, someone is, that does not mean you have to date them. Yeah, you don't have to be an equal opportunity dater. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and and part, part of this is like, and going back on what you said a little bit earlier, that um, the, the, the fact that being nice is seen as something special, as opposed to just being what well, what should be the norm, being nice to other people, and, and uh, it reminds me of something that I read a little while ago. Is there's a whole heap of guys out there that are that are nice enough guys, right? Like actual nice enough guys, decent decent people. But that shouldn't be enough for you to be dating someone. You know, there's going to be somebody else who's also a decent guy, but they also play guitar or they're also really good in bed, or they're also, you know, they've got these extra traits that make them more desirable, Making and that makes sure that being nice and being decent it is should never just be enough to be able to win a woman over, right? I don't even like that phrase, win a woman over. Yeah, it's very like, true. It's not... We're not prizes, and we're not prey to be hunted. We are, 100%. you know, ultimately our desire and attraction for someone comes from us and our own desires and preferences. And so nobody needs to win us over or convince us. It should be a genuine connection between two people. Mm. No, you're definitely right. My language there was was off, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I, I just find that point really really interesting that so many people think that being a decent person to another human being is enough to be dating them it it just blows my mind and i don't i'll never understand it yeah no one thing i mean no one thing or no combination of things is enough to be dating someone there's no checklist it's Mm. subjective and kind of um intangible yeah 
ab- absolutely. Um, so we'll move on to the next point that you had, which was nice guys finish last because women like bad boys. Do you want to go into that a little bit for us? Yeah, so what nice guys will often say is that the reason they don't get a date is because women like jerks. Um because women are secretly masochists who just want to be mistreated. And um, that's kind of insulting to women to say that we're inherently masochistic. Um, I think it kind of goes along with the idea that women are submissive and like to be dominated and need a man to like take control and put them in their place. And I think the reason they say it is they just don't want to look at themselves and look at other reasons women might not like them other than the fact that they're nice supposedly well, um, sorry you go ahead like the fact that they have an entitlement complex and it's uh, the point that i was going to bring up with that especially the fact that you, you you said that they don't realize reasons that people might not want to go out with them i think that shows a distinct lack of emotional maturity and emotional intelligence as well which for me when i'm wanting to see somebody as a huge turn off straight away and a huge red flag straight away. Do you feel as though that's part of it? Hmm. Is it a lack of emotional intelligence? I don't know. I think that's almost that almost gets used as an excuse when people say men are less emotionally intelligent than women or <clears throat> um, less socially skilled because I feel like some of them actually are emotionally intelligent and use that nice guy thing combine with their emotional intelligence in order to manipulate women. So I actually don't, I think there's something more insidious behind it. Well, if they're emotionally intelligent and they're still making moves like that, then it's just, well, like you said, it's manipulative behavior. It's almost narcissism, isn't it? It can be. Hmm. Hmm. You've got me thinking a lot here and I like it. (laughs) <laughs> and any time that I have discussions like this, even with even with friends of mine and whatnot, I always look at myself and the behaviours that I portray as well, because I'm always trying to to improve who I am as as part of this. And like I said, I used to be one of these so-called nice guys, and I'm I don't think I'm completely out of that yet, but I think that I'm getting a, a, a little bit better with it. Um, and discussions like this really, really help me with that as well. And I hope it'll help um, other men out there to become better versions of themselves as well, which is why we had this discussion, right? Um, but the, the next one's probably the most, um, one of the most argued points, I think, from the from the nice guy community, for lack of a better term, is, is the nice guys get stuck in the friend zone. Now, my thought of this instantly is, what's wrong with a new friend? <laughs> exactly. What's wrong with a new friend? And it, and it goes back to, to how we started this discussion. And, um, yeah, if, you're, if a guy is leaving a girl in, in the friend, uh, a girl is leaving a guy in the so-called friend zone or whatever, then what's the guy left the female in in that situation? If he do, if he doesn't want if he's not okay with a friendship, then she he's literally just telling her okay you're just a sex object to me. That's basically what you're saying here, isn't it? Yeah, the term I coined is the sex zone. The sex zone. Hmm. And and we've we've sort of talked about that already, so we won't um, we won't go too far into that because we are we are short of time. I was running a little bit late for this, so I'm trying to rush through this as quick as I can. Um, for, for your sake, um, which is absolutely fine. It's my own fault. Uh, but the next point we've put on is nice guys are nice for even noticing you. Now, this is disgusting. Is this actually a thing? I think it can be a thing for people who are marginalized in some way. Um, larger people, people um, who don't fit society's beauty standards that abusive partners can make them feel like they can't get someone else and so that like the partner is nice and making a concession just for wanting to be with them See, that, that, just just the thought of someone saying that they're better than somebody else makes me a little bit ill 
Um, it makes me think that it's a always going to be a, a bad situation from that point on, regardless of what really goes on. Um, I think that this that this point happens, and I think I've seen it happen um, with when the the female's been a victim of abuse in the past. Do you, is that something that you've correlated with this or at all, or no? I haven't thought about that, but that makes perfect sense if their self esteem is already lowered. Mm. And someone to take advantage of that. Yeah, and and the nice guys would. And, and I'm quoting you again here. Nice guys exploit this belief to manipulate women, right? Right. And that's. And and we we spoke about narcissism just a moment ago. That's narcissism at its finest. I think. Oh no, I wouldn't say finest. At its worst, probably. Um. The, the next point that we come across is that practicing basic human decency makes me a nice guy. <laughs> and, and we've sort of touched on that a little bit as well, right? Right, and that's insulting to guys in general because that's like saying men in general are not nice and they they just want sex and they just objectify women and mistreat them. And so I'm the exception by like being a man who's decent. <laughs> That's insulting to both men and women. <laughs> it's, just, just, <laughs> it's just absolutely, absolutely crazy. And there's a great, there's a great little paragraph in here that I, that I really like from yours. Is that our low standards for men manifest in a number of ways. In addition to applauding men for taking on parenting duties that are expected of women, we praise them for sexual conduct that should be mandatory, not praiseworthy. And mm -hmm. I think, I think that's so, 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 so truthful. When you know, a, a girl's been drinking and the guy takes her home and just puts her to bed and we praise the guy for that and you're just sitting there going, well, no, that's what he should have done. That's what anybody <laughs> should do in that situation, right? It makes me think of that scene in the movie Animal House when this underage girl passes out drunk at a party, then the guy has like a devil and an angel on his shoulder like debating about whether to rape her. They don't put it in those terms, but that's what he's debating. Yeah, that's and the insinuation. <laughs> and then it's like, wow, he like really overcame temptation and like behaved morally by not raping her. But uh, that should be the first thought, shouldn't it? <laughs> what should? The well, to do the proper thing and to go and put her to bed, not anything else. There shouldn't be too much else crossing the mind of anyone at that point. Uh -huh. No, for sure. Just get that person home safely. But it's 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 just insane to me that that's even. Yeah, I'm, sorry, I'm I'm actually getting angry reading some of this that there are people that act like this. Because like like I said, I'm I've never been the the perfect guy, but this is actually just just yeah a little bit crazy. And that the, there's one part in here you're, you're telling a story um, about about a, a good guy, and it was coming from almost a a sexual assault kind of thing. And it was just a. I'm going to quote you again here, just to to finish this off. Is we started kissing as we'd done before, and he started reaching for your shirt button. Said it wasn't ready for that, and you'd told him that before. After you thought that it was Cecil, you saw a lascivious grin on his face and realised he had unbuttoned your shirt without you noticing. After I pulled away, he apologised, and you said, at least you stopped. Mm. See, this for me is 100% sexual assault, right? You made it clear that that was not allowed at that point. You did not consent to that. And it's it's the... At least you stopped part is is the all too common part of it, of that I think right, and the and the worrying part. Yeah, it was like I'd bought into the nice guy mythology and thought, okay, well at least he like was able to overcome the temptation and stop himself. Like mm -hmm. again, having very low standards for men's behavior. The scariest part of this is the next thing that he said. Can you remember that? It's a guy thing, I guess. Yeah. But but it's not, <laughs> and it shouldn't be. No. <laughs> and it and it's just insane. Um, but we we are due to finish up here. Um, 
thank you so so much for for coming on and doing this i know i was late and i know it's we've had to rush through it a little bit um i would love to have you back on to talk about some of the other things that we've talked about as well uh if you're up for that a little uh, another time um but just before yeah. we go what's uh, a piece of advice that you can give um two males i guess in this situation on how to approach the the friend zone versus fuck zone argument and how they can actually just be how they should be i guess well, I understand that when someone you're romantically interested in just wants to be your friend, like it does hurt your ego. It's happened to me. I would just remember that that's your issue, not theirs. They haven't done anything wrong just by having their tastes and preferences and try not to take it personally because they're, those tastes and preferences are individual and you will find someone who is interested in you as more than a friend. But in order to do that, you need to be gracious and to appreciate women as friends. That's the only way you'll get one romantically is if you also see the whole person. So keep that in mind. And you, if you think like no women want you or something, um, you might be surprised by how things change when you're a feminist ally and a good listener and kind and considerate. Mm. Absolutely. I think that's, that last point's something that I've learned over the last year and a bit, I would say. Um, this week especially has been ridiculous for me and I've been so, so lucky for it. But, yeah, um, and taking it graciously, I think, is a, is, a, is a really good point as well. And realizing that everybody's got their own parts. You know, everybody's attracted to what they're attracted into. And as a guy, it's easy to just say, okay, no, fair enough. And I think one more step from that is accept the friendship and grow a friendship with that person as well. I think that that's a, a, a point that I've tried to take on a lot more. And I've gained some of my best friendships out of it, really, um, where I've been turned down and just been like, they are, sorry, I only see your friend. And I was like, okay, so let's be friends then. And I think that surprises some people that I'm just like, okay, that's fine, no worries, which is terrifying in and of itself. But uh, any last notes from you before we head off? I don't think so. Thank you. No, thank you so, so much. I do really appreciate this, and it's it's been so cool talking to you. You too. All right, bye. Bye. Guys, I've got to tell you, listening back to that is, is really, really amazing for me. Um, really, really huge. I just, I really wish that I had more time to spend with uh, Susanna to go through that a little bit more in depth. Uh, hopefully we'll have her back uh, for a future episode. We'll have to see how that goes, but fingers crossed for that. But for now, here's my little chat uh, going into more personal experiences around, uh, around the fuck zone as well. Here's my little chat with Sarah. Please enjoy. Angel smile is what you sell. Promise me heaven, then put me through hell. Chains of love got a hold on me. When passion's a prison, you can't break free. Oh, you're the loaded gun, yeah. So now after that great interview, we're going to welcome Sarah to the show. Sarah, how are we doing? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, we knew each other a long, long time ago. We were just talking about that uh, off air. It's been about 14, 15 years since we've seen each other, but it's really cool to, to get back in touch with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself before we go too far in depth with everything. Yeah, um, well, I live in Brisbane been here since I was 10 and um, I'm an architect, work on mostly commercial stuff, um, just bought a house, have a cat, all that fun stuff. Oh, cats. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows um, that 
I don't like cats purely for the fact that I'm allergic. I would love them if I wasn't, but the allergies yeah. put it all away for me, unfortunately. That's a shame. <laughs> Um, cool. Thanks for that. But uh, the the reason that you're on today is continuing on from my from my chat with Susanna, who was uh, you, who the listeners have just listened to, and we were talking about the the fuck zone. So I'm going to reiterate here what um, the fuck zone is, because a lot of people I put it up on Facebook, and I think a lot of people were confused about what I actually meant because there were all types of different weird comments that people were making. I'm just like, none of this actually makes sense. Um, so the, the fuck zone basically is the opposite of a friend zone. So if you're wanting to be friends with somebody um, and just friends, and we hear we hear the friend zone thing with the whole hashtag nice guy thing quite a lot. But mm. it's when a girl wants to be friends with a guy and just friends, nothing else, but well, not even girl and guy, but a person wants to be friends with another person. And... Yeah. Um, basically, all the other person wants is is sex. So uh, you're friend zoning them, but they're fuck zoning you basically. And then they most of the time they tend to disappear after they realise that they're not going to get that fuck that they want. Is that your understanding of it? <laughs> I've explained that really <laughs> badly. Um, I think I have the same understanding. Um, <clears throat> I guess, yeah, pretty much just like. You're there for one reason, and then once you've uh, been used, you just get thrown away. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I think the key part of this, though, is with fuck zoning, is that the communication is not there, and that's what that person's after. A lot of the time, they're trying to just bit cruise along, and eventually gets to the point where you're like, "Wait, you just want sex? What are we doing?" <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, and it, it's that. Lack of communication and deceit, which I think causes all the problems, as opposed to people actually just wanting sex because wanting sex is absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. We we yeah. are humans after all. It does feel nice. We like doing it. <laughs> so the the reason that um that that you're on here really is that you've been you've been on both sides of this coin, right? Yeah, that's right. You've been you've been fuck zoned and you've done the fuck zoning, for lack of a better term. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how else to put that. <laughs> um, yeah, <you're> right. <laughs> so the the way that we'll start this is by talking about you being the fuck zoner, so you fuck zoning somebody else. Um, tell me the story around this. I think um, so. I was using Tinder. Um, I'd just come out of like a pretty long term relationship, and it was like really full on and like ended pretty badly um so yeah I was just looking for some fun and like to get back out there because I was you know it had been a hard few years with that person um yeah so I was on tinder and just meeting a few different people here and there (laughs) yeah Just one or two people. But I suppose, like, I don't know, I started off a bit naive and thought that um, probably you could meet somebody who could be a partner on Tinder. Um, I I still think you can. Well, yeah. It's not likely, sure, but um, I've done a few episodes on that in the past. You can. Yeah, so I kind of thought um, probably you could meet somebody there but um didn't really have very much luck and then kind of got to a point where I was like oh whatever fuck just need to get you some. All. yeah fuck you all like I'm gonna do what I want to do and I'm going to enjoy it and screw everybody else like that's just what that's what you've done to me so that's what um that's what I'm yeah. gonna do now exactly <laughs> and why um, Exactly. And so I met this guy and he, yeah, he's really nice. Um, he's, I don't know, he's very sweet, but I thought, well, I didn't really enter into it thinking, oh, I'm going to fuck zone you, but um, it's what ultimately happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but we went on a few dates and we got together and like we had sex, obviously. Um, um, and the sex was quite good. <laughs> 
Brilliant. Um, exactly what you want. Exactly. Um, and he, but we kind of realised that, you know, like, that we're not we're not really compatible and that we wouldn't really be together um at all like at the did, did like he we're want, just just having fun yeah kind did of he thing. want a relationship out of it um i'm not probably not to to think about it now because he had just come out of a difficult divorce so he was just like getting you know he'd been in a relationship for a long time they bought a house and like going through a so he was still married mm-hmm. uh, at the time. So it was like a bit of a messy divorce uh, situation where she cheated on him and whatnot. Um, and so like I don't know, but like it seemed like he was interested in a relationship to begin with, and then we started seeing each other. Um, I'd go over to his house and whatnot, um, but um, probably like we realised that we weren't really, like, for each other. Like, he's really nice, we're going really well, but, like, he's, I don't know, reminds me of my... Yeah, like, he he just, like, was very, like, tradey, just, like, a tradie who (laughs) had a simple life and just, like, lived, you know, came home, swore a bit, drank a bit, but didn't really have very much like aspiration or whatnot. And I think... Is this the whole architect versus builder argument? (laughs) No. no. I I don't have a problem with that. Like, it's more just, like, not really wanting to do more, like, Mm -hmm. with your life, I guess. Yeah, I get you. Um, And, yeah, so we... Well, we continued seeing each other because it was, like, quite convenient and we lived close to one another and we enjoyed having sex with one another. Um, but I suppose, like, partway through that kind of relationship or fuck zoning that we um, had established, I think that was fairly mutual. Um, I kind of brought up with him uh, whether he would have a problem with me sleeping with other people or not. Um, and he's like, oh, I don't care as long as you don't tell me about it kind of thing. Um, and I think that kind of just, like, grounded the what everything was mm-hmm. if that makes sense so yeah, yeah. yeah that was that was my experience and then that kind of went on for like a year okay. uh, See, so yeah my, my, my thing with this is at least it was mutual i guess mm. like you you both like you went into it not really looking for a relationship you were just like nah fuck it i just want to get out there he's yeah. he's done what he's done so initially it was sort of okay you're after sex. He yeah. might be after something yeah. else, but you don't really know. But mm. it, it's kind of that nice, happy ending sort of part to this because because you had that conversation of what it actually was and how you were going to go about it, which I think is a, yeah. is a key point. I don't know, though, because, like, we didn't really um, necessarily, like, set a ground, you know, set the ground for it and just, like, make up a plan or discuss it to begin with. It kind of just evolved that way. Like, we kind of, um, like, I was getting what I wanted and we were going out and doing things together, but, like, we weren't in a relationship so per se, I don't know. But basically just we, fuck buddies at this point. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess so. But <laughs> Sorry, then, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rephrase time. that because I've used my <laughs> least favourite term for what that is. I need to use my favourite, which is comrades. <laughs> <laughs> terrible that's a terrible pun <clears throat> um, it's me yeah true <laughs> um, yeah so I don't know it, it evolved and then we um, at a point um, I just ma- I made this decision conscious, conscious decision that like that that's all that it was mm-hmm. I suppose um, but you know I do you think he knew I, that as well though um, I don't this really is just know. conjecture, obviously. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know. know what's going through his mind. Mm-hmm. Um, because like, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Like, because we were spending time together and we we're going on dates and doing things like that. Um, and like you know, 
making food for one another and all that kind of stuff. It was just kind of nice relationshipy stuff mm-hmm. um, until I got to this point and I was like, well, we're not going anywhere. Like, it's nice, this is fun, but um, it's not really going to be anything more. So um, I need to start, I don't know, moving on, looking for something well, for something that is is what I want, but I also want to fulfill like my other needs at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and probably like after I brought up the idea of sleeping with other people is when like um, like he probably that I think that was probably the first time that he thought of it. But I don't know. Yeah. Mm. So how did it how did it sort of end, for lack of a better term, I guess. Was that mutual as well? Or yeah, was I, it was fairly mutual. I guess, like um, like I said, it was fairly, it was pretty much a relationship of convenience because mm-hmm. um, we are both getting what we wanted out of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, you were. <laughs> and I, I was actually living at home at the time and, um, and then I found a place and was moving out with some friends. So once I moved house um, was when the relationship ended and that was kind of was, was further away and more difficult and whatnot. But um, there was like one occasion after like I'd moved where we where he came over and, and you know, we had a bit of fun. Um, and I think that, that was pretty much the end. I was like, oh, not yet. I don't know. Was there a conversation around that or does it just sort of drift apart? Um, I think it was an, like a understanding, like we knew that mm. when I moved that I wasn't going to be going out there anymore, um, because it was just, it was too far and it was, you know, too hard kind of situation. I thought too hard would be the, the ideal part of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> very good. Um, no, it's just, Hey, my yeah. humour has not changed since high school. Pardon? My humour has not changed since high school. I can tell. <laughs> Still um, drawing penises on desks. No, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> it's on paper now. I've moved up in the world. Very good. Yeah. No, I think yeah, I think we kind of just knew that when I moved, it would um, it would end, and and like we still kind of kept in touch, but um, yeah, it was just kind of like. The not odd the same thing. Way. Yeah. No, no, not the same way. No. It was kind of like I was feeling lonely. I think that night, and I was like, "Want to come over?" <laughs> I, need, I need some dick. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but, again, this is this is on the nicer side of the whole of the fuck zone thing. I actually like how this has gone because it's not just um, like I said, one one side of the party just sitting there going and having no idea what's going on and then getting absolutely uh, mm. uh, can't think of another word but shafted is what I've come up with um, yeah but yeah, yeah so no, that, I think sorry go interest, ahead. I was just going to say that like yeah. I think it was like that was probably the best experience I'm telling you this one for a reason <laughs> because <laughs> we we kind of did know that but like um, certainly like I was still um, on Tinder and like, yeah. Um, I love me a bit of Tinder. <laughs> it's it has its um, uh, uses. See, I, I've noticed like the last year or so, I've become a lot more popular on Tinder, and I'm trying to figure out why. I've got no idea why. But have it's fantastic. No, I've always had. I've always kind of had the beard. Mm. I think I'm looking after the beard a lot more. I'm looking after how I look a lot more. So. Yeah. And in the last <clears throat> sort of six, seven months, I've lost about 13 kilos, so maybe it's that too. Maybe. People are pretty shallow, so. Oh, hell yeah. But so am I. Mm. Sometimes. It, no, it depends on what I'm after, actually, whether I'm yeah. shallow or not. If it's just for a bit of fun, I'm definitely shallow. There's no two ways about that. But if I'm looking for something that could potentially be be, be more meaningful or um, could develop further, then, uh, yeah, the shallowness sort of evaporates from that point, I think. Yeah, I think that's standard. Well, because if I'm, if I'm going to be with somebody, then I want to enjoy their company. 
If I just want mm. to sleep with them, then I just want them to look nice. <laughs> Fair enough. You want to be able to hold a conversation? Yeah, I don't, I don't need to hold a conversation at that point. Although, okay. but then you go into the whole friends with benefits thing or comrades. Then it's, mm -hmm. you sort of want to find that middle ground. That's the most difficult thing I think I've learned. Um, yeah. And because you, you do go into those situation of dates and that sort of stuff, knowing what you, I think most people have an idea of what they want out of it. Hmm. So I think, um, yeah. I think most point. people do, but I don't think that people really disclose it very much. And no, God certainly, no. like, <clears throat> that's the experience that I've had. Because, like I said, I went into, like, the whole Tinder thing a little bit naive and thought that, you know, I can meet somebody and have a relationship and whatnot. And certainly that was not my I'm not. Experience. I'm not going to lie. That doesn't surprise me that you were slightly naive going back into it. I, I actually mm. don't think that people who have been – I think that people in who have been in relationships recently jump on Tinder. I think a lot of them are straight up naive a mm. lot of the time. Yeah. Because t Tinder lets it's different us, it, it, Yeah, it is a hookup app, isn't it? It's a hookup app. Mm. It's not to find long lasting yeah. love or anything like that. It's probably, probably because, like, when we were younger, we had MSN and shit like that. Oh, how and like MSN? <laughs> and you think that, um, I don't know. Because you go from one, one mindset to the next, and like I don't know, it just doesn't really translate very well. Oh God, no, it doesn't. I did a whole thing about um, how much you, how much, um, how many signals you actually receive when you're just talking via text, as opposed to you know seeing somebody's face and stuff like that. And we receive seven percent of information through text, mm. as, a, as opposed to like talking face to face even oh you mean at that being able to understand what yeah people so you mean yeah so you've got tone of voice inflection you've got um mm. body language facial facial um contortions that sort of thing that's all the information you miss out on if you're just talking by text and that's why you see a lot of online relationships fall flat after they finally meet because they're just like actually you're not the same Person. Yeah, that's that's very true. I've definitely had that experience as well. Just mm. being like, oh, you seem like a really cool person, but yeah, in person it's like, oh, <laughs> cool. Um, so let let's flip the story that you've just told me now, and let's go on to uh, you being friend zoned. Mm. Uh, no, sorry, you being fuck zoned, not friend zoned. <laughs> so you being fuck. Yeah. Tell me a story about that. Well, I guess like. It's a, a similar, like, these things are happening at the same time, I suppose, uh, where, like, I'm in this fuck zone relationship, but then, like, I'm also at that point where I've asked him to, um, if I can sleep with other people, I'm actually looking for a partner at the same time mm -hmm. because that's what I want. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so... I'm stupidly still using uh, Tinder and like going out on dates and seeing people and sleeping with them. And like, I remember I met this guy and I don't know, it was so weird. Like I, I had the most amazing date and time with him and like, it was just like perfect. He was really sweet and like, very affectionate, but I like not going in a out on a date with you. weird way. <laughs> Sorry, you're in New Zealand, too far away. <laughs> Once upon a time, though. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Yeah. Well, yeah. So we, yeah, we went on this amazing date, and I was just like, "Holy shit, this guy is like really awesome!" And we just like spent all day making out on the grass and and whatnot. And so I was convinced that like this was going to be something amazing and then um yeah it just like not there's nothing it's just like as soon as he got what he wanted that was it I was gone um and like I think that happened like that kind of thing where you like go out on a date and you think that you've met somebody that's really interesting and it could be something mm -hmm. that you like that cycle, you get, you get excited and happy and whatever else. And, um, then you have sex and that's it. You're gone. Like, I don't, I didn't know 
like what happened. I think I slept with so many people. It was so ridiculous. <laughs> um, go, go. Uh, it was, I don't know. Like I said, it was kind of, um, it felt liberating a little bit as well. Cause I was like, you know, I've been, had all this, um, actually I can think of a better example of being fuck zoned. I was probably like, I think I was 18 or 19 and I, um, was going out, like, you know, just starting to go out like on the town and my friend, she was with this partner, um, and he had a group of mates and, um, <clears throat> I met this one guy and I was like, cause I, I'm so stupid. I just like, I, I just want to like have somebody to love. So I, I was quite stupid and I, I just, this guy, um, I, I slept with him for like ages and I was like, oh, it's going to be a relationship. It's going to be a relationship. Like, oh, I really like him, whatever else. Yeah. And, and he just like, we would sleep together. Like we, whenever we went out and like he was there, we'd go, we'd sleep together. Like we went and had sex on his fucking desk at work one time. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, this is like, you know, this is so great. Like we're having so much fun. It's really nice. But like just constantly like being, um, like it was just like, yeah, it definitely wasn't that mutual thing. It was where like I was, um, so um you just being pulled along or? yeah, definitely. Like, um, I don't know. I think it would be good to hear the, my friends, my friend's perspective of what was going on, I suppose <laughs> about, about it. Cause like, I was like, yeah, I don't know. He wasn't even that good looking, but I was just like, oh, he's so great. And you know, he's, got this good job and like he could be really great to be in a relationship with but um yeah it's just like I would, everyone's probably laughing at me behind my back like all of his mates all just having a good laugh being like oh Sarah's so stupid she's sleeping with him and and he don't, he's not interested in her at all mm. like and, yeah. and, and this this brought me straight on to what I was going to ask you next anyway so in that situation where you know you think that all of this stuff might happen and then you know, was it a straight cut of uh, communication from that point, or like, what do you mean? Did sorry? you get ghosted <clears throat> when he was done with it all? Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. He, well, and the dumb thing is that, like, I, it happened so many times, like, and I just kept on doing yeah. it, like, yeah. thinking that something so, was going to change. So, how how does in that situation where you know all communication gets cut and you've got these huge expect or oh, not expectations but hopes of what might happen mm. how do you feel in that moment after that's happened or for like the next few weeks after that point oh you just feel like rubbish like it's just it's horrible like you kind of lose um that feeling of worth like mm -hmm. um yeah like i have i had like a lot of i just felt all the time like what's wrong with me? Like, why, why doesn't anybody love me? Why won't anybody be with me? Sure, um, yeah. yeah, that's, that's what it did. Like that, that's the feeling that I had. Mm. Cause the, the way that I, the way that I see this and I've been guilty of fuck zoning people a lot and it, mm. like, especially in the past, a uh, whole heap, I've sort of, I've grown out of it now and I'm very, very upfront with, with, with my intentions, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, mm. But thinking about it now, I look at it and go, so this person wanted to be not even a relationship, just a friend with me, right? It wants to be yeah. friends with me. And I've sat there and I've gone, uh, friends, friendship isn't good enough for me. I just want to, I just want to get laid. Mm. And the, the problem with that is, I feel it makes the other person, the person who is wanting the friendship, feel like all that they are good for is is for sex or for a quick fuck. You know, it makes them feel yeah. cheap. And is, is that something that you relate with? Yeah, situation? definitely. Yeah, I've definitely felt that way, like, um, so many times. Just, like, you know, it's the next day. That's the worst, like, afterwards. Like, you... You want to like have that 
some kind of rapport where like you send a message or talk and have chit chat afterwards but and then there's nothing and you're like uh like I've they've, done blocked, it again. they've blocked you from facebook or whatever yeah something whatever but, whatever it is just yeah, not replying just, just just like you know like going from messaging each other every couple of minutes or whatever and and then nothing yeah, see that that that's for me has got to be one of the one of the worst ones. I don't think I've ever been, I don't think I've ever been fuck zoned. I've definitely been I've definitely been friend zoned, and I hated that when I was younger. But over the last yeah. two three years, I think I've changed that around, which I'm very that, very happy for. I think that women are more often um, like fuck zoned than Absolutely. the other way around. Absolutely, yeah. I could not agree more with that. And a lot of that is because of the fact that men don't like to talk. Mm. For for them, especially in like Australia and New Zealand, where it's you know blokey bloke, macho yeah. masculinity bullshit. We can't talk about how we feel, and we can't talk about what we want out of things. And you sit there and go, well, actually, if you're upfront with how you're feeling to begin with, or what you want out of it to begin with you tend to have a better chance with getting mm. what you want yeah it, it that that's my experience anyway i think i think a lot of guys just think that you know if i act like i want something more then i'll get you know if i act, act like i want a relationship then i'll get sex and then i can drop them and it's fine but i think that also like um women they like think that uh I know what you're saying, and I agree that if you're up front, you might get get it anyway. Um, but I think that that's because we think that we will be able to turn it into something else. It, the, the old fixer-upper, for lack of something, a better term. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. I think, yeah, I think that we that we believe that, you know, oh, if we spend enough time together, then it's like what I was talking about before with that guy that... I just kept on going back to, mm-hmm. like, oh, if I keep on going back, it will turn into something. We can something. get something out of it. Right, right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that can, be, that can be quite dangerous, I think, at times too, Go, yeah, going think, through with that mindset. Yeah, well, like, I don't know, kind of you devalue yourself. And I think that, like, you know, that was me when I was 18 and, and like, the other, the previous example was me when I was, like, 27 or whatever Mm -hmm. um and i think that i grew and learned a lot in that time and and like was able to know what i wanted and what i would put up with and um yeah able to make a better decision i suppose yeah i was going to ask what did you learn from especially that the experience that you've just told us about what have you learned from that and even the the last one we talked about. So, from 27, you're now 30, right? Yeah. Yeah. In that in that uh, space of time as well, I guess you've learned a fair bit um, about yourself and about <clears throat> how to go about things. So, yeah. What have you learned through yeah. all of these things? I think that um, like it's going to sound stupid um, is about valuing yourself, like. Mm-hmm. I think the the biggest thing is that as women, maybe I'm being like a bit of a feminist right now, but um, you know that we don't value ourselves and we grow up like you know I remember high school and whatnot, and just wanting affection and attention from guys, and I would get that by mucking around and whatever else, you know, short skirts, yada yada. I have no experience um, of you doing that. Um, in a completely different country yeah Um, (laughs) (laughs) Um, and like I think that that's how we think that we we can get um, a relationship and that's how our value is Mm -hmm. determined but yeah I think the, the biggest thing is like knowing who you are and what you want and like being, being able to value yourself um, like in the end like even though I was sleeping with multiple people it's like that's what I wanted that's what I knew and I didn't 
didn't have any false like um, sense of what like I didn't think that being with that person is going to make me feel better about myself. Yeah, right. Gotcha. And I, th- I think that's a great life lesson as well, just to to know what you're worth. I do think that there's a lot of people on earth that don't realize how much they are to themselves and to other people as well. Mm. Yeah, I think um, I think the hard thing is that you don't really know that until you go through it. Mm. Yeah, that's, uh, but that's a maybe problem. like if I had like parents who were more like I don't know you know, modern or whatever. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the word is. Um, oh, your parents would have loved me. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, have th- I have this weird thing with parents. Parents love me. Yeah. The, the, the people that I date off, uh, sometimes don't end up loving me so much, but their parents will always love me. I'm good like That's that. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I don't know. I maybe think, because they don't really know me. Maybe. Well, we put on we put on a face, don't we, for, for other people. We project what we want them to think about us, so we behave a certain way. Yeah, I mean, um, well, I'm, I'm pretty open with, with who I am. Like, All it takes is to go through my Facebook feed one time and you've found a lot of stuff you probably don't want to learn about me. <laughs> well, it's not like I'm closed off or anything, but you do put on a face depending on the crowd that you're in. Whether, yeah. whether it be with parents, whether it be with somebody that you potentially want to date or or whoever, you know, a different yeah. group of friends. But it's important to still, even though you might be adapting your behaviours, you're not changing who you are as a person as a whole. I think that's important and that's where that value comes in again, valuing who, mm. you, who you are as a person in that situation. Yeah, I think it's really important. It's really difficult. It's a difficult lesson to learn, and I think that a lot of people um, maybe don't even don't even learn it. <laughs> like they just they end up in a relationship with somebody who um, I don't know who they think that is making them a better person, but it's not about other people. It's about you. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, I've kept you for over half an hour now, so thank you very, very much for, for coming on and uh, sharing your stories and uh, I guess I, I guess your advice in learning your own uh, your own strength and your own self-worth as well. So, yeah, thanks each for taking time out of your day. I really, really appreciate it. No problems. Thanks for having me. the touch of your lips dear but much more for the touch of your whips dear you can raise welts like nobody else as we dance to the masochism tango say our love is a flame not an amber Say it's me that you want to dismember uh, Blacken my eye, set fire to my tie As we dance to the masochism tango At your command, before you here I stand My heart is in my hand Yeah. <laughs> it's here that I must be my heart entreats just hear those savage beats and go put on your cleats and come and trample me your heart is hard as stone or mahogany that's why i'm in such exquisite agony my soul is on fire it's a flame with desire which is why i perspire when we tango you caught my nose in your left castanet love i can feel the pain yet love every time i hear drums and i envy the rose that you held in your teeth love with the thorns underneath love sticking into your gums your eyes cast a
the spell that bewitches The last time I needed 20 stitches To sew up the gash you made with your lash As we dance to the masochism tango Bash in my brain and make me scream with pain Then kick me once again and say we'll never part I know too well I'm underneath your spell So darling, if you smell something burning, it's my heart Don't you take your cigarette from its holder And burn your initials in my shoulder Fracture my spine and swear that you're mine As we dance to the massacre, tango